what's up guys a lot of a lot of stuff going on in chicago crazy things sad man you know i will be speaking about the two brothers and the two little girls that just got shot on the north side you know um if you guys follow me i i stay away from what like what's trending what everybody's doing um i just i just try to spread my message man and that's just from wrong to strong and, and just give my my point of view my two cents that's that's pretty much it so let's get into this video america has always been fascinated with the mob kingpins crime it's in movies shows history and it's become culture crime and scandal from inmates in alcatraz to john Gotti and al capone but the united states has its own share of homegrown drug kingpins mob bosses and gangsters this is gangsters of america hey what's up guys my name is jc i am Wrong and strong. If you're new to my channel, make sure you subscribe, hit that bell so you don't miss nothing. If you're part of my team, mi familia, mi raza, you already know. Suantel a suburban, we about to take a ride. What's up, guys? Welcome to another episode of JC's Shenanigans. Yes, man. A lot of us have been to prison. A lot of us have done time. A lot of us. You know, I've been through the system, recycle, in and out, and, and we share our stories to motivate people, ch uh, maybe change their lives, maybe they won't make the mistakes that we made. But, has your celly ever died over a puzzle? Yeah. I've had a very interesting life, I must say, and I have a lot of memories, a lot of <sighs> PTSD. <laughs> <laughs> you know, the hardest time you could do is county time. County time is, is what I would uh, call, I don't know if you guys have seen that uh, show, uh, I think it's called 90 Days In or 60 Days In. That's, that's county time, like when you're stuck in a unit with everybody in there and you, you're really not going nowhere else. You're just in that unit. You're working out in that unit, you're cooking in that unit, you're, you're doing everything in that unit. You know, a lot of people is the reason why they actually just sign their pleads and get out of the county because once you get to the yard, you get to move around more. You know, you get to actually make some money, you go to work, you go to school, you get on a schedule, a routine. Half of the time when I caught my cases in Chicago, that's that's what it was. I just, I was just, give me the paper, let me sign it and send me off, you know? You end up going to Joliet, Joliet, they spread you to wherever you're going, Stateville, Dixon, Menard, you know, all the joints, but county time is the hardest, and I believe it's for a reason. I believe it's set like that so you could be stressed out and sign your plea agreement and get the fuck out of there. They want, they want signed papers, guilty, guilty. That's what they want. They don't want you to wait it out. I, my hat goes off to those dudes. There's been, I know dudes they've sat in county for up to seven years. Yeah. It's hard, hard time. I was doing time like this and you always build a relationship with a person there. When you're doing time, you always have that sidekick you're always with, whether you're always eating with him, watching a movie, working out, you know, uh, besides your group in general, you always have your, your close, close homie that you build, you know, a bond with and relationship with that you do everything with. That's how I was with this person. I'm not gonna say his name, just out of respect for his family. Uh, he was a black stone. And we, we did everything together. We uh, worked out, we cooked together, we, we did everything together, but he was overweight. He, his health was not, not the greatest. He loved to eat. He loved to eat Snickers, he loved to eat tamales, he loved to cook. That's all we did all day was cook, do push-ups, and watch movies. That's all we did. I ended up getting a job as a clerk and it gave me more access to kind of move around a little bit and you know when, when you're doing time like that it, it actually does you good to get a job you actually want a job because it gets you out of the unit it gets you out of that same routine and you're actually doing something you're busy just like barbers just like you know people working in the kitchen you get out the fucking unit and you you go to work so it makes your day go faster so i was working as a clerk doing time like that you do everything to the t because you turn into a perfectionist for some reason prison changes changes people the, the only bad thing is that when they get out they forget how much how perfect everything was 
had to be for them in there. And they forget to start to keep doing that out here. So one day she comes up to me and she's like, hey, so, you know, I can't pay you because it's just it's just it's a volunteering job. You know what I mean? Uh, and I was like, that's cool. She's like, but is there anything like from crafts, anything like that? And I was like, shit. Uh, uh, puzzle, if you get me one of those big puzzles, I'll, I'll take a puzzle for a payment. <laughs> and sure enough, man, she brought me a puzzle. And I got addicted to it. I started doing them all the time. So me, me and my boy, his mattress, we would roll it up and do the puzzles on there. We started getting good at it. So we actually started actually doing them on the wall where you put a, a piece of toothpaste on one piece, put it on the wall, and you just do the whole puzzle on the wall. So what happens when you have a lot of time on your hands? Yeah. So one day we're, we're just sitting there, right? We're doing a puzzle. We're almost done. And this one was a hard one because the color coordination was like crazy. It kept on going in and out, different colors, and it really didn't have stuff that stuck out. So I would sit at the edge of the, at the, edge of the bed on a chair and he would sit in the middle. If you guys are familiar with a cell, there ain't really that much space, you know what I mean? I sat closer to the door, he sat right in the middle between the toilet and the desk. We, we were almost done with the puzzle and I heard him say my name. You know, and it, I'm sitting right here, the, the post to the bed right here, I'm sitting right here and I look over and he says, Julio. And I'm like, what? And he brings his arms up really high and then slams them right on the bed, like, you know, like Hulk, <laughs> Hulk smash. And the whole puzzle goes up, flying up in the air. So I'm like, what the fuck are you doing, motherfucker? And I see it in his face. Like, he just, he took his chin in and he just started falling sideways. So I went to grab him. He was so heavy that when he fell to the side, I hit my face on the side of the bed. And just went with him, you know what I mean? And he fell to the side. He kept saying my name, like, in a, in a, in a small whisper, in a small whisper. His eyes just started going going back. I, I just, I watched him like take his last breath. So I got up and you know, I'm pressing the button. The doors were locked. So as soon as they popped the door, I came out and he had a couple of his homeboys that were at the, at the end of the, so I ran over there and I was like, yo. So they come out to sell, they run over there. They're trying to like do CPR on him. They're trying to put uh, ice on his nuts. And you know, I had to, I had to step back because that, that's what's, even though people like to say that it's not racial, that it's really the gangs that 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 run shit, like that is different. It's it's still a little, it's still a little bit more racial when something going down like that. You gotta step back and let the, their people like take take care of it. You know what I mean? You're kind of like an outsider. Even though me and him had a really good close relationship, and they knew that. You know what I mean? That's why we were actually selling together. But at the end of the day, that's still his people. So you still have to step back and let them do their thing. You know, they ended up rushing them in. You know how it is in, in, the, in the counties, man. They come up to just clean up. It's, it wasn't really, it, it took them forever to get there. They gave them, they brought them back like twice. And uh, yeah, he ended up passing away. I've met some really, some of my best friends in the system. You build a camaraderie in there that I don't think anyone can build out here because you, you share each other's pains, you know, family, dying, uh, kids not listening, uh, wives moving on. You share all these pains and tribulations with other inmates and you, you, you grow a bond and you become a, f you, it's a friendship that I can't even explain that I don't even think exists out here, man, to tell you the truth. But at the end of the day, man, I'd rather you build that bond out here than in there. Because doing time, man, is for the birds. It's all lost time, trust me. At the end of the day, every decision has a consequence, whether it's good or bad. Just really sit down and think about what is the next thing you're gonna say, do, and think about the consequences before you actually do it. Slow down, take a step back. Remember, I use the small platform that I have just to spread my message. And my message is going from wrong to strong. My name's JC. Hey, don't judge nobody. Stay in your lane. Live savage. And remember, you only have one life to live. Live it out here free, not going to jail, not doing drugs, not living in depression, taking care of your body, your mind, your soul, everything, man. Be faithful to your wife. Be 
be a great dad to your kids. Be a family man and be a God man. I'll check you guys on the rebound.